The Pikmin series began life on the Nintendo GameCube back in 2001 and told the story of a spaceman named Olimar who had crash landed on a strange planet and needed the help of the planet's inhabitants, the titular Pikmin, to find the lost parts of his ship. A sequel was also released on the GameCube which built on the first game's premise. A couple of Wii ports followed in subsequent years before a new third entry released on the Wii U in 2013 and it's a deluxe version of that very game that has now released on the Nintendo Switch. Is it worth pulling out of the ground or should it be left squarely where it is? I'm Glenn Bolger, thank you to Nintendo for the review code and now let's find out. When food resources start running desperately low on the planet of Kopai, the SS Drake and its crew of Captain Charlie, Alf and Brittany is sent out to find food reserves. Unfortunately after an accident it crashes on an unknown planet. It becomes apparent that there is life on the planet when the crew, who are separated after the crash, encounter the Pikmin, a friendly and helpful species who look like they could be the key to completing your mission. So Pikmin 3 is essentially a real-time strategy game set in a 3D environment with an emphasis on navigation, time management and combat. You play as the crew members of the SS Drake with the ultimate goal being to find the cosmic drive key for your ship, thus being able to get home, but also needing to look for a source of food, both to consume at the end of each day to keep yourselves going, but also to hopefully bring back to your home planet should you find enough. The problem is that you cannot carry anything and this is where those Pikmin come into play. You will discover a range of Pikmin types as you play, each with a unique ability that will help you out in a particular situation, such as the starting red Pikmin who are immune to fire and also good in combat, or the rock type that can smash glass panels and cannot be squashed. There are five different types in total across the whole adventure. At the start of each day you will be asked to choose which of the available areas you want to land in and you will then have the day with the progress of time being shown via the bar at the top of the screen to get as much done as possible and hopefully find some of that fruit. Any Pikmin types that you have unlocked at this point will land their pod called an onion next to your spaceship and from this point you can then call out as many of each type as you feel you need. Once they are out they will follow you around. There are small pellets around the area that can be carried back to the onion by the Pikmin and this will cause more Pikmin to sprout from the ground. They will first sprout as just a leaf Pikmin and can be plucked from the ground at this point, although if left in the ground they will grow into a bud and ultimately into a flower. The more mature a Pikmin is when it's picked, the faster it will be. As you explore each area you will find certain parts that are inaccessible, be it because a bridge is only half built or there is an object such as a large box in your way. Here you can direct your Pikmin towards the object and watch as they work as a team to remove the problem. There will be a number displayed over any object which lets you know how many Pikmin are needed in order to move that obstacle. Other problems will be Pikmin specific such as an electrified fence or a glass panel blocking your way. You may find that it will take leaving an area, going elsewhere and returning later before you can fully open an area up and find everything it has to offer. The aim is to find the fruit and have your Pikmin bring it back to the ship. This will then be turned into juice for your crew members to drink at the end of the day for sustenance. Some fruit will be on the beaten path whereas other bits will call on the aforementioned strategy as you try to work out how to use your Pikmin army to solve environmental puzzles. On your travels you will find your lost crewmates and can then split into teams. Having to use this strategy to good effect at times in order to maximise your time and your resources and as if that wasn't enough we haven't yet mentioned that the planet is teeming with hostile creatures that will not give a second thought to eating your Pikmin if you are not careful. You can attempt to defeat said enemies by throwing your Pikmin at them in large quantities, overwhelming the enemy or you have a charge move that is also quite effective. A single Pikmin is incredibly weak and even whole groups can be killed in a second if you are reckless. Matching the correct Pikmin types to particular enemies will reduce Pikmin fatalities as no one wants that dreaded reminder of just how many have been lost throughout your journey. Any enemies you killed can then be picked up by the Pikmin and carried back to the Onion where they will be cultivated into more seeds, therefore more Pikmin. As well as standard enemies there are also boss battles that must be fought and won in order to open up other areas and these will take a combination of strategy, patience and skill if you are to emerge victorious. Again brute force can be used at the expense of severe collateral damage but the beauty of Pikmin against other real time strategy games is that you care about the little fellas so much that you want to keep them alive. Well apart from the sadists among you out there, you know who you are. 
Control wise you have the option of analog controls or you can activate gyro controls using the right Joy-Con as a pointer should you wish and both schemes work very well. I actually went back and played two hours of the Wii U version in preparation for this review just to reacquaint myself with how it controlled and this Switch version does feel a bit more refined. It was always a little awkward moving both the cursor and the character with the left stick on the gamepad and it definitely feels more responsive in this version. So if you played it on the Wii U then what is new? Well first and foremost the main story mode is now available to play two player in co-op. Each person will take control of a character and the screen will split vertically. As well as this a hint system has been added although you can turn this off in the menu and there is an achievement system with badges earned for progression made in the game. The DLC that came out for the Wii U version including Bingo Battle is a part of the package here and this minigame serves as a fun diversion and again is available in multiplayer. You do lose having the map on display via the gamepad of course but you have got a mini map and the full map can be pulled up by pressing the minus button. It includes the same features such as directing a computer controlled character to a location although it does not utilise the touch screen in handheld mode which seems like a bit of a missed opportunity. Gameplay is a great blend of real time strategy and time resource management with fantastic level design, clever puzzles and the addition of co-op. It scores 19 out of 20. Controls feel slightly refined over the Wii U original, gyro controls work well and really the gamepad isn't missed. They score 17 out of 20. In terms of the visuals, Pikmin 3 belies its age and still looks stunning to this day. The world is a beautiful mix of almost photorealistic backgrounds and the cartoony, almost plasticine-esque characters of the Pikmin, the crew and of course the monsters. In one area you will pass plant pots and flowers as well as streams delicately cascading past you only to encounter a majestic icy tundra in another with snowflakes flashing past the screen. Metal gates look rusted with time and the whole setting has an eerie familiarity to it while still managing to feel alien, a bit like the atmosphere created by the Disney film WALL-E. Handheld mode looks just as beautiful and it really is quite a treat seeing this stunning world realised in the palm of your hand. Everything looks just as crisp and the writing is of a good size leading to no issues at all. Audio wise the soundtrack behind the visuals is equally as enchanting managing to evoke feelings of warmth, melancholy, endeavour, tranquility and panic depending on what the on screen action calls for. The Pikmin sound wonderfully charming and so much personality exudes from them both in terms of the noises they make and the curious looks they give you. Anyone who can hear the faint cry of a Pikmin being eaten as their ghost flies upwards and not feel a huge pang of guilt is surely dead inside. And that's the beauty of the world created, you feel a part of it, you feel responsible for these creatures. Visuals build a beautiful world that is a pleasure to explore and it exudes that typical Nintendo charm in absolute spades and scores 19 out of 20. Audio adds a huge amount of weight to the world and brings the titular Pikmin to life and also scores 19 out of 20. Pikmin 3 Deluxe costs £49.99, €59 Euros or $59.99 or $79 Australian dollars 95. It will take up 6.5 gigabytes of your system storage. In terms of hours of play for your money, the main campaign will take most people anywhere between 12 to 25 hours, with it depending on how concerned you are about losing Pikmin, how many times you restart a day, finding all of the items, etc. Plus, of course, you have the included DLC in the form of the bingo mode and the missions. It is a little on the short side, mainly because it's so much fun that you just don't want it to end. And that premium pricing that Nintendo insists upon using for these Wii U ports does exacerbate this issue. On the other hand, the production values are so incredibly high, as you would expect, and it looks, sounds and plays so well even to this day. It does include some new content, plus the ability to play in handheld mode and has that local co-op. I've seen the physical version available for about £40 via some online retailers which is an easier price to swallow and probably the cheapest that you'll find it for a while as first party titles do tend to keep their value. I will mention that there is a demo on the eShop so perhaps try that out before dropping such a large amount of money and value gets 14 out of 20. To conclude, Pikmin 3 Deluxe is a fantastic real-time strategy game that looks and plays just as well today as it did back in 2013. If you haven't played it before, there is no better time to jump in and if you have, there is some new content here including co-op, plus it's great playing in handheld mode, something the off-screen play of the Wii U couldn't really deliver properly. It will just depend though if you want to stump up £50 for some new features. 
If it were £10 cheaper, it would have easily scored 90%, so it may be worth seeking out that physical copy. Ok Nintendo, I've partaken in your Pikmin related 4 play and bought Pikmin 3 again, so how about we now step it up and get Pikmin 4 on the go. That would be marvellous. Pikmin 3 Deluxe gets a switch up score of 88%. So there you have it, one of my favourite games of all time, let down slightly by its price in bearing in mind its support, but still a wonderful game and well worth your time and money. A quick thank you to our patrons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe of course and until next time, happy gaming.